Uh, in the previous episode, we learned that thanks to Gibbert Sadek with impossibility theorem, when the set of preferences or the preference domain or the type space is unrestricted, meaning uh, d, whether it's finite or infinite, doesn't matter, but theta uh, includes all the strict rankings over the set of uh, uh, d, well, so it's an unrestricted domain of preferences. Well, then in this environment, we know that there is not going to be a, a strategy proof uh, social choice function with nice properties. Uh, and those nice properties are actually very weak. It's like it's, its range should have at least three elements in it. Uh, when I say nice, well, dictatorial social choice functions are not nice in that sense. However, it's a well-known result is that this uh, impossibility theorem actually does not survive if we restrict the type space or the preferences, meaning um, the agent's preferences uh, can't be anything, all right? It's some, somehow restricted. Uh, and so in this restricted domain of preferences or types, uh, well, then possibility actually exists. Well, the, this is one of the uh, restricted domain assumption. Uh, it's, it's highly famous, single peaked preferences. And in this episode, I will try to explain you what we mean by single peaked preferences. All right. So for simplicity, I'm going to assume that the D, the set of alternatives or the, uh, 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 the decisions are finite. And so a type space for each individual I is nothing but rankings. Uh, strict rankings over D, all right? We don't allow uh, uh, indifferences for simplicity. Well, however, we are going to restrict it even further. I mean, uh, not allowing indifferences is kind of restriction, I know, but it's not enough. We, we need to restrict it even further. And here is, I mean, I'm not going to give you the full formal de definition because it's very uh, notation heavy. Uh, I'll just try to give you the idea and then I'll give you a, a sort of a simpler environment where formal definition is, is much simpler. So here's the idea of single peak preferences. And individuals have single peak preferences if for any uh, a type profile, okay? So theta is a type profile, a vector of types, one for each player, uh, one for each individual. Uh, there is a way in which we line up elements in D in such a way that each individual has a single peak. All right, well, here's an example. So let's suppose there are three uh, social uh, uh, decisions, A, B, and C, all right? Uh, if it is a voting environment, think of this as there are three candidates, all right? A, B, and C. So agent one ranks A over B, B over C, agent two ranks C over B, B over A, and then agent three ranks B over C and C over A. So the question is, can I line up, whatever that is, it's hopefully gonna be clear, can I line up those uh, uh, three uh, elements, A, B, and C, in such a way that each agent has a single peak? Yes, I can for this profile. What is this? Well, I mean, this is not a real line. It's just a line, okay? I put A first and then B and then C. Well, uh, remember agent one ranks A over B and B over C. So what does that mean? That means, so let's say the vertical axis is the level of utility, all right? Um, so agent A's utility is, let's say, somewhere here. Agent, I'm sorry, agent one's, uh, individual one's utility for A is somewhere here. What we know is, well, what is the value? The absolute value is irrelevant. All we care is that utility of A is higher than utility of B because agent one prefers A over B, right? So this is A's utility, this is B's utility, this must be C's utility. So if you can, well, just draw or connect those dots, you'll see there's a single peak for agent one and this is agent one's uh, kind of uh, preference. All right, and so he has a single peak uh, where his peak is A, uh, uh, the, the uh, candidate A. Well, what about agent two? Again, I need to keep the same line uh, for all agents. That's important. Well, over the same lining, 
What about agent two or individual two? Well, she prefers C the most. So let's say her utility for C is this. B second, let's say B is here and then A, okay? I mean, they don't have to be linear by the way. Uh, so just connect the dots. Again, if you see, this is kind of the, kind of the utility function for agent uh, two. And so she also has a single peak, which is C. Well, what about the third agent? B is her top, okay, so let's say this is B, and then C, all right, and then A. So connect the dots. I'm not using a different color, maybe I should have, but this is agent twos, this is agent threes, okay? So as you see, <clears throat> this is kind of the agent threes utility function, and also he has a single peak, and the peak is B. So therefore, there is a way of lining up those candidates, A, B, C, in such a way that each agent has a single peak. And so in this prof a preference profile, the agents actually do have single peak preferences. All right, so this is in uh, my set of single peak preference domains. However, this preference profile is not in this uh, restricted domain because this profile doesn't satisfy single peakedness. Well, how do I make sure? Well, let's keep the same lineup, right? A, B, C. All right. Uh, I shouldn't erase agent three, I guess, because agent one has exactly the same preferences. Anyway, agent one again ranks A top, B second, and then C third. So uh, his utility function is something like this. Let me use a different color for blue color for agent B. Agent B prefers B to A, A to C. All right, so B is his top and then A and then C, okay? So his utility function is something like that. Again, he has also a single peak, very good. Well, let me use a red color for agent three. So he prefers C to A, so C is top and then A. Let me put A here, and then B. Again, all that matters, the red dot, where it is located in comparison to blue or the black dot is irrelevant, okay? Because I'm not comparing one agent with another agent. All I'm comparing is the red dots with each other, all right? And all it matters is the, the red dot corresponding to C must be higher than the red dot corresponding to A, which should also be higher than the red dot corresponding to B because the red dots represent agent three's utility function, uh, utility values or preferences. So A and then uh, B, okay? So once again, I'm going to connect the dots. Um, all right, well, here's the thing. Uh, so, well, that's a good thing. Uh, I mean, the good ex exercise. So the way we are gonna connect them is this way, okay? I'm gonna start from A and then B and then C because this is the way we line it up, right? So uh, if you see, well, in this case, agent three doesn't have single peak. He has two peaks. Well, this is one, I mean, his first peak, this is his second peak. Okay, uh, again, it's like what the heck peak means then, right? I mean, it's like the global maximum. No, it's not global maximum, but this is the first peak, this is the second peak. And in the next example, it will hopefully be clearer. And so therefore, uh, in this preference profile, uh, the, the agent's preferences do not satisfy single peaked, uh, all right? it violates. Well, you may say why we draw the red line in this fashion, but we don't do it, I don't know, something like this. Uh, something like this, okay? So that weird fashion. Uh, well, so it seems like there's a single peak, uh, if you know what I mean. Uh, so it's like, uh, so if, if, if you're drawing mountains, okay? So I have two peaks. All right, so here my mountain looks like something like this, all right, some weird thing, and so I have a single peak. So why don't I draw it that way? Well, because that's the way uh, we lined A, B, and C in this fashion, right? Um, a is first, and then B is second, and then C is first, so therefore when I start drawing, 
I should start from A and then the next should be B. So I should connect A with B and then B with C. All right, so I cannot go from A to C and then C to B. That's not the way uh, those alternatives A, B, C are linked, uh, so, so, sorry, uh, lined up. All right, that's, that's, that's very important. So, uh, well, you may say this is a highly abstract way of describing preferences. And in fact, no, not really. Uh, single print preferences are highly used in political economy and, and in voting environment, in fact. So this is uh, what I'm going to do next. So think of D is again finite subset, but D is a subset of R, all right? So therefore, uh, the D is not some abstract ABC, but instead some numbers like D is equal to two, three, five, okay? So therefore the lineup is obvious, is like two first and then three and then five, okay? Well, in this case, uh, the question or the formal definition is the following. So individuals have single peaked preferences if for each individual and for each type, all right, uh, there exists, uh, I'm sorry, double E, there exists uh, a P theta I, all right, which is in D. This is called peak. Uh, this is the peak of I's preference uh, when his preference is theta I, such that uh, P of theta I is greater than or equal to D, which is greater than D prime. D and D prime are some elements of D uh, or uh, d prime greater than d, uh, greater than or equal to p of theta i, implies that v i d theta i is greater than v i d prime theta i. Okay, so the lineup is already given. So here it says, uh, when d and d prime are on the left side of p theta i. So let's say p theta i, the peak is here, and then I have d, and then I have d prime, okay? Uh, if this is the case, or, let's ignore or, well, that, that means the utility of d has to be higher than the utility of d prime, all right? So it's gonna be increasing. Okay, what else? Uh, if, however, d prime and d, which are, you know, two elements in this set d, are to the right of the peak, uh, in which case d prime is here and d is here, right? d prime is greater than higher than d. And so, again, the utility of d should be higher than utility of d prime. And this is true for any uh, d d prime, uh, okay? which is also equal to uh, the peak. So therefore that basically implies, I can take D as the peak itself. So it basically says the utilities are going to be increasing uh, until we reach to peak. And then after that, it should be decreasing. So the idea is again, very simple. There's going to be peak and one peak only. As we move away from this peak, uh, the utilities should be decreasing. If you remember the previous example here, uh, Agent Therese's utility was like, uh, remember A here, B here, C here, and so he was putting C top, and then A second, and then B. So his utility was something like this. So for example, C is not a peak because as we, as we move away from C, uh, gradually moving away from C, the utilities do not increase because it increases from C to B, but from B to A, it starts increasing again. Or A is not peak because utility decreases from A moving A to B, but from B to C, it increases again. So the idea of peak is that when you start moving away from the peak, utilities will gradually decline always, all right? It will never increase. So single peak means, well, there's only one such point. Okay.
So that's the idea. Well, once again, this is highly used uh, preference uh, restriction in uh, voting theory or social choice theory or political economy. Well, why is that? You can think of uh, as a, a choice as uh, the voters are going to choose, uh, are, are sort of distributed in the zero one interval and zero represents the extreme left, one represents extreme right. And so uh, whether the uh, voters are uniformly distributed or not doesn't matter. The voters uh, located here, for example, he prefers his standing point. This is his ideal political party. And as he moves away from it, uh, his utility decreases. Uh, equally, doesn't matter, right? And here, for example, it may decrease something like this, but here the decline could be uh, very big. So it doesn't tell us how much the decline will be. All it says it's going to decline. The utility will decline. Okay. So if another voter here, his ideal point is this location. He prefers the most this political party. And then as he move away from his logical, uh, not logical, uh, uh, philosophical standpoint, the political parties uh, are, are less and less uh, attractive to him. Okay. So. Uh, that's, for example, a single peaked preference domain. Well, why is this preference domain important? I'll talk about it in next.